Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the brand new 2015 Lincoln MKC, manufactured by the newly rebranded Lincoln Motor Company. So, what does Lincoln stand for? And is this more than just a fancy Ford Escape? Our first drive review is coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. How does the Lincoln MKC drive? Yes! Alright, it's not a sports car and let's face it, the people who are buying this aren't going to be taking it to the racetrack. So in a word, fine. Everything about this car is right down the middle, including the way that the steering feels, it's a little bit light, including the way that the engine sounds, it's a little bit quiet. Yep, that's floored. I think 3,000 is all she'll let me do, at least when I'm not driving. Including the way that the brake work, which actually is surprisingly good, so there's a little bit of a difference. Is it better than a Cadillac? SRX, uh, Audi Q5, or a Mercedes-Benz GLK. You know, it really depends what you're looking for. This certainly has that American feel of luxury. The issue, of course, is that Cadillac has poured a lot of money from General Motors into rebranding itself. And Lincoln has been in the process of rebranding itself now for what seems like at least five years. and they quite haven't figured out exactly what they stand for. What's the heart of Lincoln? So, um, the soul, the DNA. Yeah, I mean, obviously the, um, so yeah, we are trying to go after a different audience, right? The, I think, uh, and I'm not the marketing guy, I'm an engineer, so right. I use my engineer speak, but yeah. you know, we the, the brand has aged over the years, right? And we've let it. So we're going after much a younger demographic, um, but not we're not going after your you know, your 20, 30 year old, that, that, that wouldn't make sense, but it's a much more sporty, dynamic, engaging drive. Um, all of the vehicles we want to do are very engaging, right? We're, we don't, um, you know, it's not back to town cars that passed, right? Which was anything but uh, engaging. Now that actually quite sold well for its demographic. Yeah. But we're definitely trying to change the market. There are two turbo engine choices. There's a two liter, the same as in the Ford Escape, and of course the one to go for this 2.3 liter that puts out 285 horsepower and 305 pound-foot of torque. It's made it to a six-speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters that feeds all four wheels. Here's an interesting side note, this same engine will be in the upcoming Mustang where I suspect it'll put out even more power. Why and how is this different from a Ford Escape? So. Uh, first things first, right? It is based off the same platform. Yep. Based off our, it comes from Europe, our C1 platform. We've driven a lot of our C1 uh, vehicles. So, C Max, C Max, Focus, uh, you name it, right? It's a, it's a, it has a lot of bandwidth to begin with. Um, but when this car was was started in infancy, um, first off, we went, we never baselined against the current Escape. We went against the competitive set, our, our European uh, X3, the uh, GLK. Style-wise, Lincoln MKC certainly doesn't look like a Ford Escape. But the styling in general is conservative, it's understated. I think that Lincoln tailored the styling of this car to meet the demographic of the brand, which, let's face it, tends to be an older buyer. It of course does have the ubiquitous LEDs. And it does have that kind of understated styling that won't necessarily make you look twice at a shopping mall, but won't offend either. And at $36,000 base price and as, as tested $50,000 MSRP, you also get a lot of technology including adaptive cruise control, active park assist, lane keeping system, even heated rear seats. But overall, it's a very comfortable car to spend time in. I could see crossing the country in this and not feeling tired. It's also very quiet in here. Lincoln is, of course, a luxury brand, and this car reflects that fact. 
perhaps one of the best parts of the new MKC is the interior. Everything you touch feels soft. The steering wheel is thick. The controls are relatively easy to use. And of course, it has Ford's ubiquitous sync system, which, well, you know our feelings about that. You either love it or you hate it. Perhaps one of the most unusual features of this car is the fact that it has a push button transmission. So you push drive for drive, S for sport mode. And then if you really want to get frisky, you've got the paddle shifters to change gears. It's a little bit weird, kind of like the Jaguar's hockey puck transmission, but after a while you do get used to it. In case you're wondering, here is that transmission I was talking about. There's of course drive, there's sport, there's your on and off switch, and then if you put into sport, then that's where the fun happens because all of a sudden you can start using these paddle shifters to really get the most out of this 2.3 liter engine. You know, are people going to be driving a car this fast? I don't think so. But can you drive it this fast? Yeah, you can drive it this fast. Because in its natural question, some people thought taking escape and add Lincoln on top. Right. Well, you're going to get bad engineering again. And we've done that in the past. And we didn't do so well, do we? So we really so from here and create what we wanted to do. Um, so how is it better? Besides, obviously, it's got a better engine, a bigger <clears throat> engine, but there's more to it than that, right? There's more under the skin than you can see. Right. A um, couple things. Um, uh, noise was paramount, wind noise. Uh, put a lot of effort and, and money and resources into wind noise. So, for example, we got 100% laminated glass. Uh, active noise cancellation to uh, help uh, permanent with powertrain noise. Um, we did uh, mirrors, special attention to mirrors. Uh, uh, pedestal mount and mirrors like that to help with wind noise. Uh, we felt that you name it, we, we put an MVH stuff, right? So wind noise there. Um, we widened the track 22 millimeters over the platform. And as you probably know, widening a platform is not easy at all. So we, we, we spent a lot of resources and money into that. Just like the Ford Escape, which this is of course based on, this is a European size crossover. In other words, back seat room is somewhat on the tight side. Take a look, this is where I drive. Let me put my knees back here. Not a heck of a lot of room, but I like the Ford Escape. I do have heated rear seats, and of course I have this wonderful panoramic sunroof, which opens up what could otherwise be a pretty claustrophobic back seat. <laughs> yes, your feet can get trapped in the MKC if you're a bigger guy like me you have a lot of baggage and you have a lot of potential in the brand and at the same time you have to design something that's different and says Lincoln. Yeah and I, I, again as an engineer when, when I look at a design or how they design a car I'm, I'm somewhat fascinated in all of how they how they do that. How do you bring the old to new without making it look like you did that? Um, and yet when they're designing something they're still looking five to ten years out in the future. Um, I've always hats off the design team how they do things like that. They say imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. So let me show you something. The MKC has this new clamshell rear door, which means that these lights are incorporated into the back of the car. Does this remind you of anything? Perhaps an Audi Q5? As automotive journalists, we always like to have a headline. For instance, the new Mustang, the most powerful Mustang ever. Easy automotive headline. What's the headline here? It's much harder when you have a car that's aimed right down the middle. And I would say that the headline is, Lincoln is still in the process of exactly figuring out what it wants to be. As always, on the TFL scale of buy, lease it, rent it, or forget it, I'm going to say, I don't know. I've only driven it for about an hour, and that's not fair to you, and that's not fair to Lincoln. It's a perfectly fine car. It ticks all the right boxes. It drives well. It has a nice interior. But is it the kind of car that's going to stir the soul? You know what? Let's wait till we get up to Colorado for a week to really answer that question. So you'll have to come back. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car. Thanks for watching. And remember, check out TFLcar.com for everyday real-world reviews. Ciao!